Welcome to Paris Air Show 2023. Behind me is the biggest airplane at this Paris Air Show, the 777X. I'm waiting Mr. Stan Dill, Boeing commercial airplane CEO, to personally take us for a tour inside. This is a test airplane right now, Sam, but what you can see if you walk in and you go down the aisle is a much more spacious airplane than even the current 777. We widened the width on the inside so passengers could have a lot more comfort. Why don't we take a walk through here? Yeah. Typically, this is the area where first class or business class occurs. Many of the airlines around the globe are putting suites now. Uh, launch customer like Emirates. I can't tell you what they're going to do, but it's going to be special. Uh, Cutter Airways, ANA, Cathay Pacific, British Airways, all anchor customers around this product. When you think this airplane is getting certified, to fly, then Sam, to deliver. Middle of 2025, we're very confident uh, around the certification program. Uh, we're in this test phase right now. We've got uh, well over 2,700 hours on the airplane. We'll have more by the time we're done. But the answer, the simple answer is the middle of 2025, you'll see this airplane in service. Are you expecting some orders coming at this air show? Well, we already have a terrific order book. You've seen, even since the launch, Singapore Airlines added to the order book. Uh, Air India committed to the uh, 777X as part of their large order that was announced uh, this year. And yeah, we expect more orders here very soon. Welcome to the 777-9 flight deck. It's designed to have a high level of commonality with the 777 Legacy 300VR and the 787. Uh, it also includes a lot of uh, advanced technologies, touch screens, heads up display, integrating uh, iPad, electronic flight bag. Uh, as far as performance, it handles uh, very similar to the 777 300 ER and the 787. What's your max speed cruising and, and your ceiling? Our typical cruising speed is 0.84 Mach, which is what the 777-300ER typically cruises at. Maximum altitude is 43,000. Where is the button that the winglets get folded yeah. up and down? There's a lot of discussion about the folding wing tips. The switch is here, and the procedure for cruise is before you take the runway, you pull it and extend. It takes about 20 seconds, and the indication is down here on the forward display. You'll see them extended. They put a big blocking pin in, and they're locked for the remainder of the flight. On landing roll, they automatically fold as the airplane slows below 50 knots. So it's very simple, safe, and there's a lot of alerts to the crew that they happen to not follow the procedures correctly and uh, forget to load the switch. I've seen quite a sizable number of 777X being built. How many test airplanes currently flying? We have uh, four test airplanes in the fleet. Currently three are flying. One of them is getting modifications. It's got an interior for uh, interior testing. So airplanes one, two, and three are doing the bulk of the testing right now. This is airplane one. It has the most uh, flight time and flights on it. And it does the, the real heavy lifting for us. You can probably see the tail skid on the back where we've done a lot of uh, performance testing. With it. Why this airplane currently in production? What else it can be? The Boeing 777X. We're gonna have a tour inside the mock-up units. Welcome to the 777X. My name is Brenna Weinhoff and I'm so excited to share this airplane cabin with you. There are some incredible things going on in the 777X to make this the unrivaled passenger experience that it's going to create. And arguably the most prominent is the new architectural lines in the 777X. As you board at door two, we have countless ways of instituting an architectural welcome. And in this particular mock-up, we have a full arch on demonstration here to really welcome passengers aboard. Now behind me on screen, you'll notice that we have an architectural line that's creating a sense of height or verticality in the cabin. You see the ceiling panel is arcing up and above where centerline bins would be, and that curvature is mimicked in the outboard bin face. 
but it goes beyond cabin architecture. We've also instituted larger windows on the 777X. And you'll see here that we have two different strategies for reducing light in the cabin. We have a manual window shade, which will be standard on the 777X. And we also have the latest generation of electronically dimming technology to reduce light. We can fit two bags in the standard centerline bin, and we can fit five bags in the outboard bin. And we've been able to reduce closing forces by over 40%, and that's without the use of a bin assist mechanism. Now, in addition, we wanna make this the most comfortable experience possible for passengers. So we've been able to get an additional four inches of width in the cross section. And that amounts to an 18 inch wide seat at its widest at 10 abreast in economy class. But of course, that four inches is going to be felt by all passengers in all cabin classes. Probably my favorite part of the 777X, however, are the lighting scenes that we're able to create. The first one that I wanna share with you is called a grand gesture lighting scene. You are going to see light move from aircraft right to aircraft left. We have a setting sun that is going to move across the right hand side of the airplane to the left. Now, when you think of a natural sunset that we've seen out in our beautiful skies, the sun doesn't just drop below the horizon and then we have a dark sky magically appear. You get those gorgeous cotton candy gradients that we all absolutely love. And we can achieve those same gradients in the 777X. All right, Sam, I'm saving the best scene for last year. It's the Northern Lights or the Aurora Borealis. The Northern Lights, it is a subtle and graceful natural phenomenon. And so too is it emulated here in the 777X cabin. You'll see it gently move or gradate from greens to teals to blues. And when you pair that with these gorgeous starry skies, this quite literally looks like the natural phenomenon that's on everybody's bucket list. And we can achieve it and simulate it here in the 777X airplane cabin. This purple Dreamliner behind me really caught everybody's attention at Paris Air Show. So this month, June, has been a very busy month for Riyadh Air. On June 4th, they unveiled this beautiful livery. And the airplane flew from Boeing factory on June 12th to Riyadh to participate in a striking photo shoot uh, with the whole skyline of Riyadh with Saudi Hawks saluting the formation of this airline. So what do we know so far about Riyadh Air? The airline set itself to be a first-class airline competing with full-service airline in the region. It mentioned that it will contribute up to 20 billion GDP to the transportation sector of Saudi Arabia, and also directly and indirectly hiring about 200,000 jobs. That's a lot to come. I'm at the longest Boeing 737 here with the chief pilot Justin here. Hey, what kind of um, action are we going to do today flying display-wise? Yeah, you're going to see us uh, perform a steep takeoff to begin the show and we'll turn back toward the, uh, toward the crowd. Uh, we'll turn out, uh, we'll give a good look at the uh, aircraft and at the, uh, at the winglets on the way through. You'll see us do a uh, squat climb, a maneuver we call the squat climb, a wing waggle waving at the crowd, and you'll see us end the show with uh, what we call the pull-up pitch out. Hey, I want you to do a barrel roll like the 707 pilot Tex <laughs> Johnson did. That we'll, was incredible. We'll save that for another year. When you're flying the MAX 10, because it's a stretch version, right? It's like longer pencil. Yeah. Um, I heard that landing gear can go kind of up and down to cushioning the rotation, yeah, absolutely. something like that, to, to avoid a tail strike. We've, so the MAX 10 is longer than uh, than the other models of the 737 family. It accommodates up to 230 passengers in a single class configuration. In order to do that, in order to lengthen the fuselage even more, we came up with a pretty ingenious landing gear uh, solution that gets the airplane nine inches higher off the ground. It gives you the same tail clearance as a, as a Dash 8 or a Dash 9, uh, even though the aircraft is physically uh, is physically longer, and all of it collapses back down when the uh, when the aircraft is not moving, it, all the weights on the landing gear that collapses back down, so it doesn't look any different from the ground. It gives ground handlers the same clearance they're used to seeing. But once we get going and the weight is supported by the wings, there's a spring-loaded contraption in here that that picks the aircraft up another nine inches, 
gives us the tail clearance that we need. At what stage of the flight? This is on the this runway? Be, this is on the runway as we approach rotation speed. So finally we came from the tail going inside. So what do we That's have right. inside here? It's so just... inside we have a lot of the instrumentation that we use to test the airplane. You're looking at the water barrels that give us ballast. Even though we don't have a, a full complement of passengers on board, we're just going to simulate that weight. And the water tanks give us the ability to move it from the front of the airplane to the back or vice versa. That's very important for the testing that we do because when we're doing handling qualities testing, we're doing landing and performance uh, takeoff testing, we want that center of gravity to be out at the extremes, whether that's forward or aft. Those are the points that we're, that we're after and that we got to show compliance to. So I, I invite you to take a look at the, uh, at the rest of the inside of the airplane, take a look at the flight deck, some of the upgrades that we have coming to the entire MAX family. We've got about 3,600 of these airplanes in backlog. We've put 850 hours on this test program right now. So we're very proud of this airplane. When you are getting certified. Yeah, we're, and who is their launch customer? Our launch customer is United Airlines. We're looking forward to certification next year. All the airlines are here because SkyTrax award during the Paris Air Show. We're about to go in to see which airline wins the most award this year and see if you agree with it. The winner of the 2023 Airline of the Year is Singapore Airlines. What does it mean for Singapore Airlines? I think we are very happy, of course, we're very honored. And the credit goes to all the staff in Singapore Airlines who have worked tremendously hard over the COVID period and I am very glad to be able to receive the award on their behalf. Thank you. So there were about 70 some awards. Every airline winning an award had their dance and their time, right? While I was watching it, I want to share something very deeply with you. I've been working hard the last year and two is to create a passenger award on the digital social media to have everyone able to have a chance to vote for your favorite airline what could be done better and what's the best part in your flight to have you say in 20 seconds we can change the whole airline customer experience and that's going to come in q3 in a very simple questionnaire to rate your flight and then also all the airline can hear about your feedback and your opinion and here you meet friends and friends in aviation alex machara aviation journalist Sam, you should go and have a look inside this one. I just went in. It's quite something. It's the VIP arrangement, right? It is the VIP arrangement. There is a double bed bedroom at the rear of the aircraft. It's, a, it's probably the best one here. Welcome board, Qatar Executive Ben Smith, I think the only non-French CEO ever in Air France KOM group in the history here. What are you going to show me today? We're going to show you our state-of-the-art medium-haul airplane, the Airbus A220. First thing people notice when they get on this airplane are the size of the windows. So they're considerably larger than any other uh, narrow-body airplane. They're wider than and they're bigger than our 787 windows as well. So these bins here, with all the latest bins, they can take hmm. you know, full luggage here. So there's enough space on this airplane for one full-size carry-on baggage for every single customer. Two seats on one side, three on the other. So for European medium haul, this is extremely, extremely state of It's new uh, customers like that. We haven't got, like in the past, the DC-9s are no longer in service. Long, long time ago, I'm old, but uh, remember how those were. So, you know, Less than uh, we cut the number of middle seats in half, and the middle seat is actually wider. The wider so, seat in the middle. Yeah, this is the widest uh, medium hall seat that's out there. How many A220 you have now? You have quite a few in service now, right? Yeah, we've got 23 in service. We ordered 60, and we have a whole bunch of options as well. Uh, 
So the medium haul fleet of Air France is 110 airplanes. So almost 50%, we've made a decision to replace them with this airplane. And tell us about the long haul plan. You have a lots of older 777-200ERs and, and some of the 300ERs coming midlife. Are you gonna think about the latest 777X? Uh, well, it's a bit early for that. Um, the, you know, this, uh, the 777X is a big plane. We, you know, we recently exited our A380s. What's unique here in Paris is we don't have any slot constraints. There are four runways here. So we have the ability to add frequencies unlike some of our European competitors. So the benefit of having a you know, 777-9X, it's a, you know, if, if we want a big airplane, it's interesting. It's the only big one that's, uh, it's the biggest one that's still gonna be in production. We were the launch customer of the 777-300ER, so it was built to our specifications. Uh, we've got 43 at Air France, we have 16 at KLM. Uh, we have made the decision to retrofit, fully retrofit some of the airplanes. You probably know we have the new business class, uh, our product, on, uh, on some of our 777-300ERs. And as you said, we're going to install a brand new first class product on a portion of the 777-300ERs. So when are we expecting to see the new La Premiere? Uh, hopefully the certification goes well at the end of next year. And it's going to be a big wow. What's the best thing you like about this airplane? I like how fly it because it is really responsible and you can fly it with a lot of pleasure, I would have to say. And the incredible thing is how we can reduce our fuel consumption about 30% mm. and can use as well sustainable aviation fuel. That is a very good thing for the future. aviation industry is going to continue to grow to enable people to fly to connect places and I'm with Tasha from Boeing here the big question everyone's been asking lately is sustainability but it's very invisible very hazy topic right it's all lots of greenwashing here I want to see some figures I want to really understand you know in an easy layman's turn how aviation can achieve the net zero emission by 2050 if we were to explore some strategies. The very first one is fleet renewal. If we waved a magic wand and we made all older aircraft turn into new ones, so that's NGs into Maxes, that's COs into NEOs, that would save us 17% of our emissions uh, year over year. So that's a really big uh, difference. We also want to think about operational efficiency. So how can we make airlines run better? How can we improve air traffic management and air traffic control? If we were to take those strategies all the way over, we would be able to achieve another almost 14% support in these areas. So that also includes fleet enhancements. It includes digital uh, applications like utilizing products like Flight Deck Advisor and Flight Deck Pro. The next one, the largest opportunity for us is sustainable aviation fuels. SAF fuels is the most immediate and best way for us to decarbonize aerospace. It could help us reduce our emissions by up to 80% over time. In this figure, we're showing 53% of emissions getting better just through SAF fuels. If we wanted to create a new aircraft, let's put hydrogen into play, let's bring battery electric aircraft into the mix, we can also do that. So let's take a hydrogen aircraft in a regional space and give it 100% market share. What you'll notice on the screen is that it's making our emissions worse. And that's because the way that we make hydrogen today. So today we have what's considered like a brown energy grid. We make our hydrogen with uh, natural gas or with coal plants. If we were to start using renewable energy, renewable electricity as our fuel sources and the way that we create hydrogen, that's when we start to see a difference in a reduction of our emissions. So the biggest in play is to ramp up the production of SAF. 
the sustainable aviation feel. Yeah, we like to, to say SAF and. We have to have SAF. No matter what hall of flying you're type, what type of flying you're doing, no matter what timeline you're looking at, SAF is in every single one of those buckets. But we also want to research hydrogen. We want to research battery electric. And we've been working in those spaces for well over 15 years. Welcome to WISC. Uh, here at the Paris Air Show, we brought out our Generation 6 aircraft. Where we we want to show the world where our technology is advancing. We've been test flying for so many years now. Uh, we want to bring the next configuration. We still use a 12 fan setup like we have in the past. Uh, the big change for the new aircraft is the tilt that you're going to see on the front row of all the fans. You have three engines each side. Right? Uh, we have six engines each side, three on the leading edge, three on the trailing edge per oh, side. Oh, you have three more in the back. Three more in the back. I didn't almost didn't see it. Okay. It's like a mega drone with 12 blades. We are really taking what we've learned between the previous five generations uh -huh. and transformed into a new aircraft. This one so. is geared towards people in the future. And Here we are inside the future generation eVTO, electric vertical takeoff and landing vehicle, right? Yeah. Really automated, feels like, like an Uber, but flying in the sky. Absolutely. And where's the pilot? The pilot at, the, at like some sort of control center? We are looking at a multi-vehicle supervisor. So someone on the ground, similar to an ATC setup that is monitoring the flight. Uh, in the event that something happens, uh, somebody is monitoring every single flight, but there's no pilot on board. I'm all for it. I can't wait to see a yellow taxi like this in the sky flying with 12 blades around because Mega City have big traffic jam, right? The biggest challenge and the next step again is the certification of such eVTO, allowing them to fly safely. And that is the challenge right now in the industry and with all the civil aviation authority. Come to the air show, don't miss down next door, the Air and Space Museum. Two Concorde, not just one, the two Concorde together, including the prototype, Concorde 001, and the last Air France Concorde flew to New York, Paris. They're both here. so much thing to see. What's your favorite moment at the Paris Air Show? Hope you enjoy it. See you next time.